What's up guys, Ben Pollock here, and we're getting back to the Unfuck Your Program series. It's been a little while, but I've got a new topic that I'm pretty excited about, and that I've gotten a lot of questions about, so I think this should be a pretty popular one. We're going to talk about peaking. Peaking is something that's gotten really popular, especially in the social media age where everybody wants to show every little aspect of their peak. But, and this is something Dave Tate has written about, really I don't think that it should be all that different from your regular training. So Dave said, like, he doesn't even know where this idea of peaking came from, like, you're always supposed to train hard, right? If you have this idea that you go into a peaking stage and all of a sudden you gotta turn it on, what the fuck are you doing with all your other time? Like, why aren't you training hard in the off season? Or why aren't you training hard, you know, 365 days a year? I think that's really a better approach because there are a lot of pitfalls when you decide that peaking is all of a sudden different than regular training. And I'm gonna talk about those pitfalls today and I'm gonna talk about how you can work around some of them. Because the reality of the situation is that peaking is a little bit different than a, than a regular training phase. Just in that, you need to do your best to make sure that you can perform 100% on a specific day. Excuse me, I have a little bit of cold. So, the very biggest thing that I hear problems about is flexibility, right? You can find a 12-week peak or a 10-week peak or 18-week, however many week peak you want, right? The problem is people's lives don't really work like that. Your life isn't divided into nice 12 week blocks. And even if you can set aside 12 weeks where you don't have any major life situations planned, who's to say something is not gonna come up? And when something does come up, how are you gonna adjust around that, right? It can be really, really difficult mentally and physically. Say you're traveling a lot, right? It's hard to get your workouts in. You feel stressed because you can't get your workouts in. All of a sudden you think your peak is going to shit and you decide to drop out of the meet. I know some of y'all have experienced that before. I've experienced similar things myself. And the secret to getting around that is by incorporating flexibility into your plan. Flexibility can be very, very simple. You can just divide your plan into phases, right? You can say, okay, well, you know, the first 12 weeks of my 16 week peak are gonna be really light, or maybe not really light, but they're gonna be fairly moderate. Maybe I'll sprinkle in a couple more heavy sessions throughout that 12 weeks, but I'm really not gonna dial things down to the last month. And that way, yeah, you know, life events are gonna take place, but I can just say, okay, well, anything that happens before December, perfectly fine, as long as I start grinding my shit away in December. And that can be really helpful mentally. It can be also really helpful physically because you're not gonna burn yourself out too early. If you've read some of my other articles, you know I really only recommend roughly six to eight week peaks because more than that is just too difficult to sustain. Now the other thing that we want to talk about is stress balance, right? I touched on this just now when we're talking about flexibility. But stress balance is the idea that peak is, peaking is stressful mentally and physically for obvious reasons. And if you don't have mechanisms incorporated into your plan to deal with that stress, you're going to have a bad time. I've written extensively about this for Elite FTS, so I'm going to link to that article below. But the long and short of it is that I recommend you incorporate a lot of lighter training into your peaking phase. You can't have every freaking workout being balls to the wall. You can't. No one can. Unless you're tan green, you're going to have a bad time. So instead, you have some heavy workouts. Maybe even 50% of your workouts are really hard, really heavy. But then the other workouts aren't so hard, aren't so heavy. They're light days. And I'll talk about this in Unfuck Your Program. Again, I talked about an article below. But by incorporating these light days you can really give yourself a break while you're peaking. And that's a very, very effective way of balancing your stress. And the third one, and probably the most important one, to be honest with y'all, is the idea of technical limits. So how many times have you gone into a peak and you're running through the program and it's no problem, and you got 80% for sets of five and you're cranking them out, and then you got 85% for sets of three and you're cranking them out, and all of a sudden you hit this point where it's like, one week you're, you're smashing weights and the next it's like the weight won't even move and you just get stapled and you're missing reps and all of a sudden you feel frustrated and lost and you're like what the hell happened where did i get lost well what happened is you probably hit your technical limits there's a point for every lifter where you get to a certain percentage of your one rep max and your technique starts to break down now some people are really good grinders i, I personally i think i'm a really good grinder those people, even if they get out of position, they're able to compensate for that fact by using other muscle groups to just muscle up the lift, kind of grind through it, stick with it, even if it's a 10, 15 second lift, 
It probably looks really ugly. It's probably not very safe, but they can make it happen. The problem is it's not very safe and it's extraordinarily draining on your system. So even if you can grind, that's not a good solution because you're probably gonna burn out before you actually get to your meat. For the other group of people, they are dependent to some degree on their technique to the, for their ability to lift heavy weights, right? They use technique to put themselves in a good mechanical position where their muscles can work most efficiently so they're able to lift, say, 400 pounds. But if they're out of that position, they're just not able to, they're not strong enough. That's most people, and that's what happens, right? So let's say you're doing a set with 385 pounds, and it's fine, and then you go up to 405, and all of a sudden you get a little out of position, and it feels like you're just getting stapled. Well, you're not really just getting stapled. It was just you were a little bit out of the groove because the weight was a little bit past your technical threshold, and so you weren't in a good position to be able to finish the lift. Now, that technical limit, that technical threshold, is going to be different for everybody. For somebody like Yuri Belkin, it's probably 99.9% .9 of his max, right? For a guy who's just walking into the gym, it might be 75% of his max, okay? As you're training, as you get more experienced training, as you practice with these heavier weights more and more, your technical threshold is going to rise and to the point where, you know, you might not get to Yuri's level, but you might get to the point where it's not until 95% of your one rep max that you really start to struggle. The more your technical threshold rises, the more you'll be able to follow these peaking plans without running into this problem. Now, how do you increase your technical limits? The real answer is practice, and it's gonna come down to how many sets and reps can you do where you're just below that point where your form starts to break down. Like, if your form starts to break down at four or five, you're doing reps from 395 to 400, okay? That's the secret. That takes a long, long, long time, okay? Uh, it can take years. And if you're peaking for a meet and your meet's in 12 weeks, you don't have years. So one thing that you can do to help with this is to incorporate over warm-ups. Over warm-ups are singles that you're gonna do right before your working set, right? So say you're scheduled to do 400 for three sets of three. Well, maybe you do 415 for a single before you do those. 415 is just over your technical threshold, right? Of 405 or whatever it is. So maybe your form starts to break down a little bit, but it's just a little teeny bit, and you're still able to complete the lift. It's just really, really hard. But if you do that on a consistent basis, not every week, not all the time, because then you'll burn out, but if you do it consistently throughout this peak, you're gonna build up that confidence so that when you do get to that point where it's like, oh shit, this feels really heavy, I feel like I'm getting stapled, you at least have some confidence and you have some extra practice with those heavy weights so that you can be more effective at the end point of your peak. Okay? None of these are magic bullets, all right? Peaking is hard. It just is. Trying to make sure that you're going to perform at your best on one specific given day that can be four or six or eight or 12 or 16 weeks in the future, very, very difficult. It's just not how life works. But by incorporating these strategies, you can increase your chances of doing so. Now, if you don't want to think about how do I incorporate all these into a peaking plan because it's complicated enough as it is, I do have a new peaking program that's going to be available October 1st, uh, and it's going to be available to Big Tech's gym members for free if they sign up for a charity meet that we're, uh, that we're putting on in support of disabled veterans. So I'm going to put links to that event below. If you are in the Austin area, I really encourage you to sign up. Otherwise, you can pre-order the program now. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And obviously, if you have any questions about this process, also please leave them in the comments below. Really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time.